temporal process and maxillary process. Okay. Those are the three parts of, of the cheekbone, if you will. Okay. All right, now we're going to go to other parts of the skull. First thing we're going to look at is our two foramen, or forama. Our foramen is a hole. Okay. So when you see the word foramen, you're, going to, you're looking at, a, at, a, at an opening, a hole in something. Okay, this one we have a supraorbital foramen. Okay, this is the orbit of the eye. Right above here and here, there's an opening, small opening here and here. Those are, now these openings are usually for the passage of blood vessels and nerves, okay, through the bone. Because they have, you know, the brain's all in here. All this has got to get out somehow, okay. And, and obviously the spinal cord is the major part, but in the facial area, it's got to get through that bone somehow in order to get to those, you know, to those areas. So these are supraorbital foramen. Now, if you look below the orbit, you see another hole here and here. And that would then be the infraorbital foramen right down here. So those are pretty descriptive terms. For, you know, foramen, remember it's a hole. Superorbital, look above the eye. Infraorbital, look below the eye. And there ought to be a hole there. Now, if you look into the actual orbit, you'll see that there's two crack-like, there's really three openings in there. There's a crack-like opening that runs vertically in the back. Okay, see that right, right here? This goes up and down. There's a crack-like opening in the floor of the orbit that runs forward and backwards. And then there's a tiny round hole in the back. So you should see three holes in there, three openings. The, the round hole in the back is for the optic nerve, and we're not really interested in that right now because obviously the, the optic nerve going from the retina has got to get back through there somewhere, and, and this is where it goes through, it's right here. But we're interested in these other two. These crack-like openings are called fissures. It's like a fissure in the earth would be a big crack-like opening, okay? These are called fissures, and there are two of them. There's a superior orbital fissure, that's the one up above, up and down. And then there is an inferior orbital fissure, which is the one in the floor. Okay, so just remember that a fissure is a crack, crack-like opening. You've got a superior and an inferior one in the eye socket. So you just look in the eye socket, you should see those two things in there. One's above, the other one's in the floor, superior, inferior. Okay, next uh, term on there is the glabella. Glabella is right here, right here, in this little area in between the, the you, know, you feel the ridge, there's like a ridge on either side above the eye, and right in the middle there's a slight, uh, there's a little area, kind of flat space in between. That's the glabella right there. Okay, margins are exactly what they sound like. Margin is the edge of something. So a supraorbital margin is this edge of the orbit right here above the eye. You can feel it right here. And you're, you know, just put your finger up along your eye. You can feel that, that edge. Yeah. And then there's another margin on the lower, lower portion of the eye socket. So you have a supraorbital margin and an infraorbital margin. Okay. Supra above, infra below. Okay. So supra and infraorbital foramen, supra and infraorbital margin. Alright, the next thing on there is the anterior nasal spine. Okay. Nasal obviously is nose. Spine is something that sticks out. And anterior means it sticks out forward. So if you look at this from the side, you'll see right here the little spine sticking out at the base of the nose, right there. That is the anterior nasal spine, right there. That little spine that sticks out. Fortunately, many of these terms are somewhat descriptive. And it helps you uh, a little bit in remembering what they are. 
Now the nasal cavity, okay, the big, okay, there's a big hole in there. That's the nasal cavity, which is divided into two parts by the nasal septum, which is the bone that divides it into two parts. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go down. Okay, this is the maxilla here, this bone. We looked at that last time. But you'll notice that where the teeth attach, and you can see it in the mandible too, between, excuse me, between the teeth, there's a slightly, slight process that goes up between the teeth, or comes down between the teeth. You can see one really well right here and here. You can see how it extends down between the teeth, or up between the teeth below. And these are referred to as, alve as an alveolar process. The alveolar process. It's this little bit of bone that is elevated between the teeth, right where they attach. And so we see it pretty clearly here, and here, and right here, and right there. It's very clear. And that's an alveolar process. Okay, genu, right here at the front of the chin, right here. Most people have a slight depression there. Okay, it kind of sticks on either side. That's the genu right there. All right, now, the uh, mandible, which is what we're looking at at, at this point, and, and actually I'm going to go over to a couple of things on the second, third column there, but uh, has some holes in it. Okay, you can see there's a very prominent hole right here in the mandible, in the front. This is called the mental foramen. This is the mental foramen. Of course, there's one on the other side too. They're paired. And when we uh, get to muscles, there's a mental muscle that runs right over that area. So they have the same name. The mental foramen. I'm going to take this off so that we can look at it more carefully. Okay, this is the mandible, and you can see that up there it consists uh, the, from the, of a body. And I'm actually over here for a couple of things. This is the body of the mandible right along here. This is the angle right here where it, goes, where it curves upwards right here. Angle. This is the body angle. This is called the ramus. It's not on your list, so you don't need to memorize that, but that, this part has a name. And on the ramus, we have a coronoid process. Okay, here. Coronoid. Careful of that word, because when we get to the uh, appendicular, we're going to have coronoid and coracoid processes. So, uh, and there's more than one coronoid process, so you just kind of have to get used to them. But the, there's a coronoid process. And then you have the mandibular notch right here in between, and the mandibular condyle. Condyles are always going to be involved in, a, in an articulation between bones. This is the, this part here is what articulates with the lower part of the skull so that your jaw can move. This is the pivot point for the movement of the jaw right here. And we'll see when we get farther on that there's a little depression in the lower part of the jaw that this fits right into. Okay. And if you have, and that is your it's in the temporal bone, that is your temporal mandibular joint. And so many people have problems with that joint. And they, they're usually referred to as TMJ, okay? Temporal mandibular joint. Um, we'll skip occipital condyle for right now. So I'm just going to stop with those. Uh, go ahead and get a skull and go back over those for yourself. I'll give you about 10 or 15 minutes.